Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this week's webinar. Uh, really excited to, to jump into it today. Um, you just got me today, so just one person on today's webinar. Um, and I'm going to guide you through, uh, as the title says, like a deep dive into your Looker instance with the System Activity Explorers. Um, so the System Activity Explorers are uh, a series of explorers that you have in your Looker instance that will give you a bunch of diagnostic information on your instance, on how fast queries are running, on who's using it. Um, almost anything you'd want to ask of your Looker instance is in there, um, but we find it's largely a little under leverage. Uh, and so we're going to kind of talk through the different ways that you might be able to ask questions of it and kind of what comes out of the box and what you need to do custom. Before I jump into that properly, uh, let me just talk about the upcoming webinars that we have. Um, if this is your first time joining us, we run these webinars every two weeks. They're for the Looker community. They are about Looker related topics or and, and occasionally kind of broader analytics engineering topics um, and they're this time every two weeks on Wednesday and so in two weeks uh, we're actually going to be talking about how we use data at Spectacles we've never really you know we run our own data stack we've never really given everyone a peek under the hood of what we use it for and, and how it's set up and so we're going to talk about all of that um, we're going to particularly talk about operational analytics how we use our data stack to power marketing automation um, we're going to talk a little bit about how we do real-time um get real-time reports but in a kind of cost efficient and time efficient way using uh lambda views um, and then generally just talk about our stack uh more broadly so that's in two weeks and then in four weeks uh we've got naomi johnson from list uh going to jump on with us and talk about how they analyzed all their cost savings in snowflake using dbt and looker um this webinar is a version of a talk that she gave here in london uh, about a month ago um and it was really awesome and so we've invited her to come on to give it um they've done a bunch of really cool kind of homegrown stuff pulling a bunch of metadata into snowflake about snowflake dbt and looker and getting a bunch of really interesting insights and um analyses off off the back of it uh and so she'll be joining us in, in four weeks and we'll be announcing some more webinars in the near future as well if you want to register for those, um, you'll get an email from us next week letting you know about them because you're attending this one. Uh, but equally, just head to spectacles.dev slash webinars. You can do it now and, and make sure you don't miss them. Um, I've been talking for a little bit. I haven't really told you who I am. Uh, my name is Dylan Atlas Baker. I'm one of the co-founders here at Spectacles. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, Spectacles is a, a continuous integration, an automated testing solution for Looker. Um, and so we've got uh, really deep expertise in Looker. I've got about seven years of experience developing on Looker. Um, I was fortunate to be part of one of the first large enterprise rollouts of Looker in 2016. Um, I've managed kind of 10 plus Looker instances as a, a consulting partner for a number of years before I started Spectacles. Um, and uh, started Spectacles after that really to solve the problems that I was having um, as in part of my consulting work as, as people scale Looker instances and wanted a bit more, uh, wanted a bit more support and, and kind of rigor around changes and making sure that nothing is breaking. Awesome. That's all the preamble. Um, so we can jump right in. Um, so roughly five sections here today. Um, we're going to talk about what the system activity model is, um, how you get access to it, uh, where you can find it, all that type of stuff. Uh, we're going to talk about the explorers that are in the system activity model and kind of enumerate them and talk about which ones we find to be the most valuable. Um, we're going to talk about what Looker calls elite system activity. Um, we're going to list through the different pre-built dashboards that Looker ships with um, around the system activity model. And then uh, what I've called what to look for, which is really like assuming that all the pre-built stuff isn't exactly suiting your needs, uh, examples of different paths you can take to diagnose different types of problems. Um, it's not everything you can do with the System Activity Explorer. I think there's, there's kind of like an endless number of things that you could uh, find or analyze, and, and they're going to depend largely on what problems or, or kind of issues your Looker instance is having, depending on your setup. But we're going to talk through a couple of kind of paths that you can take and just give examples of how you might be able to do that analysis. So. Let's jump in to what is the system activity model. Um, so the system activity model, it's just an internal look ML model. So it is one where you don't see the code, um, but it is like any model that has a bunch of explorers in it that you would define in your own look ML code, in your own look ML projects. Um, that is all it is. And so it is a bunch of explorers, there are 20 currently, that ship by default with Looker. Um, and uh, you can use to 
analyze different things about your own Looker instance. They're effectively pointing to, you can think of it as like the production database that is running your Looker instance. So it has information about information about queries and users and roles and content and all that type of stuff. Um, and it exposes all that information in an explorer that is, you know, familiar to all of you because you're using Looker and gives you just kind of an interface to both ask questions and build reports on how your Looker instance is doing, how uh, you are doing as Looker admins and, and you know, how rollouts of Looker and, and things like that are, are going. Um, <clears throat> despite this being a Lookamount model, and you don't have access to the code, so it's not actually possible to edit the model, um, but you can, uh, so you can build a bunch of queries on it. You can build LookML dashboards that point to it, but you can't actually extend the model uh, itself. Um, though I will talk, there's one kind of a way around that, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit. For most of the explorers, it doesn't give you the full history of time. So if you've been using the Looker instance for four years, you're not going to get four years of, let's say, query history. Um, it limits it to 90 days. That's for performance reasons and, and a handful of other things. And so that's a consideration to think about as you're building out reports on this. If you have things that are on an annual cycle of usage or things like that, you just need to be aware of that when you're building these reports because you're only going to get 90 days and, and there's therefore going to be some caveats on some reports and, and maybe some ways your hands are tied in terms of the automation or things like that that you can build on top of these explorers. Um, admins have access to this by default. Um, but you can also be guaranteed to other users if they're given the C system activity permission, which you can see right here. This is just a screenshot of a, of a permission set in Looker. Um, and so, yeah, admins will have it by default. You can give it to everyone you want. Um, it's kind of up to you as to who it makes sense to give that to and how your roles are structured. Lots of companies have very few admins and, you know, most people who would want this type of stuff are developers. And so you can just add that to your developer role if you would like to. Obviously, an admin is the one who has to go in and, and actually change those permissions because that's the only role that's that's able to do that. Um, and this is what it looks like in the UI. So if you go to the Explore um, kind of drop down in the top right, top left corner rather, um, you're going to see a model uh, with a group called System Activity, and you're going to see these 20 here. Um, and so as I said, you can kind of ask questions about almost anything that you would imagine in your Looker instance. So there's an Explore for users, there's an Explore for roles, um, there's an Explore for dashboards, for query history, for PDT builds. Um, and so Looker have done a really good job of exposing a lot of the diagnostic information you would need to audit things, to interrogate things on your Looker instance. Um, some of them are going to be more valuable than others. And I'm going to talk about that in just a second. But this is the full list here, um, which for reasons I've... Oh, it's not. It's in reverse alphabetical order as I uh, stare at it now. Um, things you notice when you're live. Um, but yeah, a whole bunch of uh, explorers in there um, that I'd invite you to to explore after we get off the, the call today. Um, so as I said, using these explorers, you can ask most questions you'd want to ask of your Looker instance. Um, you could use the user explorer to say, how many users do we have in each role? You could use the history explorer to say, which explorers have the longest run times. Um, you could use the content usage explorer um, or the history explorer uh, to say what content hasn't been queried in 30 days. Um, you can use a, a combination of explorers, mostly the history explorer, to see what fields joins explorers are being under leveraged in your instance. Um, for most of them, uh, we have, or I have historically found the documentation around each explorer a little lacking. So to some degree, you just got to jump in there and, and see uh, kind of what fields are available and things like that. Um, but as I said, you should be able to ask most things that you would want of, of your instance. And, uh, when we speak to customers who have particularly slow Looker instances or uh, are feeling like a particular problem, often the first place we'll go is to build out a query in the System Activity Explorers to figure out, you know, where is it being felt more acutely? Can we validate it? What might be the cause? And, and things like that. Um, there are 20 Explorers here. Um, I've kind of highlighted in descending order uh, the four that I think we find most useful. Um, the first is the history explorer. That is basically the, the base of that explorer is a record for every query that has been run through your Looker instance. Um, and so if you want to find 
the longest running explores, queries that run the slowest, how fields are being used, all of that type of stuff you can find in the history explorer. Um, and as and I'll talk about this later, but we are in the process of building out a bunch of diagnostic stuff into Spectacles um, for customers. Um, the history explorer is going to be the base for probably 80% of, of the analysis that we're going to provide for people. Uh, the next one is schedule plans. Um, Looker doesn't give you the best ways to interrogate schedules or see kind of what's going to kick off at what times and understand how that's going to, you know, how that load is going to affect your Looker instance. Um, so the schedule plan explorer is very useful for that. You can see, hey, at this time on Monday mornings, we have 80% of our schedules kicked off. Um, and you might come to conclusions like, hey, if we move those to overnight or spread them out over the hour, things like that, it's going to improve both performance on the warehouse level and the the looker instance level. Um, and so we use that a lot, particularly if people are seeing kind of a slowness at, at peak times of, of day around looker um, or just generally want to kind of optimize their schedules. Um, the query performance metrics explorer is also really useful. This is like the history explorer, except it breaks down each query into its constituent part. So how much is looker compiling the SQL? How much is looker uh, how much time is actually the warehouse doing work? How much time is post-processing once it gets back to Looker? So if you've got table calcs, for example, or pivots, um, the warehouse isn't doing all that work. Looker is going to do some of that work on its end. Um, and it helps you understand for slow queries, like, is this a database problem? Is this, a, I'm, you know, maybe not structuring these queries in the best way from Looker's point of view and having Looker do too much work? So you can break all that down um, with the query performance metrics. Um, and then we speak to a lot of customers who have content bloat issues, content that got created once has never been used since shows up in content validated or validation errors. Um, so you can use the content usage explorer to find content that hasn't been used in a certain period and then uh, typically build a process to delete that in, in some way. Um, this is our experience and what I've seen across, uh, you know, a number of years using Looker, but everyone's Looker instance is a little different. And so your mileage may vary. Um, if you have, you know, a very particular issue around licensing and you need to reduce costs and you want to understand which users aren't, are in which roles and which ones aren't using it, um, you know, the user explorer is going to be most useful um, to you, if you've got really slow PDT builds and you understand, might want to understand what's happening there, the PDT builds explorer might be useful for you. Um, there's a, there's a whole range of stuff, obviously, but our experience is that like around performance, which is either the warehouse be like looker sending queries that are slow for the warehouse to return, or not using caching enough, or um, content bloat. We find that these four explorers are where a lot of of questions get answered. Um, I alluded to elite system activity um, earlier. This is a uh, version of the system activity that gives you more than 90 days. Um, for most things, it's a year, and for other um, for other things, it's a little more. Um, export It exports the data to BigQuery um, for you, which has a couple benefits. One, you get this full history. Two, you can write your own SQL queries against it. Um, but three, running against the system activity explorer uh, can produce some slight load on your Looker instance, and this help as, you know, doing anything in Looker does, offloading this to BigQuery just uh, reduces that load and makes all the load to be on, on BigQuery, which is totally separate from Looker, um, and leverages that. So this is really useful if you, you know, if you're a particularly large organization, probably, and you've got things that are on an annual cycle and, and usage for 90 days isn't sufficient or anything like that, um, Elite System Activity is what's going to be the solution to that. Um, it's available on higher tiers of Looker, and, and they've been moving this around recently. So this is one where I'm going to kind of just point you to, to your sales rep and, and talk to them about it um, instead of telling you something that, that might not be true by the time you get there. Um, but on certain tiers of Looker, this is available. Um, and so if you do, you know, if you if you are constantly in the system activity explorers, you've got maybe a central team that is constantly doing analyses and cleanup of Looker, um, something that, you know, it comes at a cost, but maybe something that that generates enough value for you that it's worthwhile. Or for many of you, you may already be on a tier where, where this is accounted for and, and you could just use it right away. Awesome. Um, so that's what we've talked about what the explorers are. Um, and instead of just kind of giving you those explorers and, and letting you kind of dive into the deep end, Looker provides a bunch of pre-built system activity dashboards that can be really, really useful um, to get started. Typically, we find that these will not give you all the answers you need, but they're a really good jumping off point for uh, understanding, I guess, one, what is possible, and then two, starting a conversation or an exploration. So there are things in here like 
the explorers that have the slowest query times. Um, and you know, just knowing that which explorers have the slowest query times isn't going to be enough to go and fix things, but it's at least going to kind of be a jumping off point to go, okay, let's go and find the exact queries that are the slowest. Let's go and, and dig into things there and, and kind of explore from here and just drill into it in, in various different ways. Um, so I'm going to go through these one by one. Um, they're in kind of broken down into the areas that you'd expect. So there's user activity, content activity, database performance, instance performance, um, actual recommendations, which is really cool. This got added a couple of years ago. Um, and then errors and broken content um, to kind of point you towards that. So the first one's user activity. Uh, as you can see here, it gives you things like how many users do you have on the instance? How many are admin developers? How many are standard? How many are you know querying on any given week? Uh, which ways are different people querying the instance? Is it mostly uh, via explorers? Is it mostly via dashboards? And so if you are you know don't feel like you have a good sense of uh, I guess one how your users are broken down across different roles, but I guess typically more importantly, you know how many how many are active in any given week and how are they interacting with your Looker instance? Um, the user activity dashboard is where you're going to want to go. Um, these are in the admin section, so admins can see this. Um, and it's second or third down in terms of section as you go through the kind of admin menu in Looker itself. Um, content activity is the next one. So this gives you a breakdown of how much content you have, how much is scheduled, um, how much is used or not. So you can see here, there's a percentage of used versus unused dashboards. What's the most popular content? What's the most popular explorers? Um, and so if you've created a bunch of stuff over the years and you don't feel like you've got a good sense of like how much is being used, how much should we delete and clean up, uh, which explorers are being used and things like that, um, this is where you're going to want to head to. Um, this is, uh, for a lot of people, the, the most kind of juicy one. Um, database performance is, you know, I think one of the complaints that lots of people get is, hey, I'd love for this query to run in five seconds instead of 20 seconds or something like that. Um, and instead of just using that kind of anecdotal data, you really want to go and understand, you know, how much is, you know, what runtime does each explorer see and does time of day make a difference and things like that. Um, this is really key for that. You can see, for example, here there's only 3% of results going from, from the cache, which means the warehouse is doing work in 97% of queries. Um, you may have a, have a set of KPI or an OKR for your team to increase that number so that, you know, um, query time speed up, or there's a whole range of stuff here around kind of concurrency, which is can be really useful. Um, this is one where What's here is definitely not enough to solve your problems, but it's going to give you really good insights as to what might be happening. Um, instance performance. So this is more around um, Looker itself and what might be put, putting load on Looker and Looker processes. So if you've got lots of schedules, um, that is Looker doing work to render those PDFs and things like that. So this is going to be useful for for that. Um, on any of these, you can click Explore from here. So I kind of alluded to that earlier, but if I wanted to drill into uh, this kind of funky pivot, I could click the top right of it and I could drill in and I could kind of refine this or restructure it or visualize it in different ways. Everything here just is built on those explorers and so you can drill in yourself. Um, performance recommendations, this one's really cool because it, it kind of has a uh, kind of has a go at telling you what's going on. So it basically tells you like, hey, the average main query execution time for this is way slower than on others. Um, you know, avoid complex SQL logic and, and things like that. The recommendations are somewhat generic, but they at least point you in the right idea. You can see we've got some here that basically say like, you probably have too many table calculations or pivots. Um, Looker is doing too much work um, itself. Uh, not the warehouse, but Looker on these queries, you may want to have a look at, you know, moving some of those table calculations down to the warehouse level in LookML or, or things like that. Uh, and then errors and broken content. So this is really just error messages that uh, the database is returning that, and it's associating it with different pieces of content. Um, this is a little cluttered. We don't find it. This is uh, obviously kind of Reporting SQL errors in particular and cleaning those up is key to what we do at Spectacles. We find this to be a, a little cluttered and not that focused on like the workflow that that helps to clean these things up. But if you're just trying to get a sense of at a high level kind of what might be broken and things like that, um, this is a good place to start. If you find that this is actually cluttered with stuff, um, drop us a message. Come get a demo of Spectacles and happy to kind of help you get get this all cleaned up. Um, so those are the pre-built dash dashboards um, that are available. Um, they're a very good place to uh, jump in to this. You can access them through the admin section. Um, if you're not an admin, uh, 
ask one of your admins to temporarily give you access or, or maybe to pull some of these reports for you. Um, depends a little on how, how things are set up on, on your end. Uh, so from there, I want to just talk a little bit about kind of like how we have seen people use these from the ground up, you know, kind of net new exploration a little bit. And so I've got three kind of scenarios to some degree. Um, I'm just going to highlight kind of how you can get what information from where. So a really common one um, is people complaining about query speed in Looker, um, saying, hey, Looker is slow. And, and often people don't know enough to say, like, well, really, it's probably the data warehouse that is returning this information slowly, not Looker itself. But the kind of uh, complaint ends up being, hey, Looker is slow. Um, and so you might want to go about resolving that. Maybe you, you put, you know, you decide, hey, as a team, we're going to we're going to go and figure this out and speed up Looker by, you know, 50 percent and, and make everyone happier. Um, and so the first thing that most people will do in this situation is they'll want to find the longest running explorers. And so they'll go to the history explorer and they'll build a query to do that. And you'll identify the key ones that take the longest to run. And then uh, and longest to run here is often going to be like both the runtime, but also you're going to want to find the ones that have a critical mass of queries. You know, if one takes a minute, but only 0.5% of your queries go through it, that's probably not the where you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Um, really, what you're going to want to do is uh, find the ones that, say, have 30% of your query volume going through them and also have slow running times. Um, and from there, what uh, we recommend people do and what we've seen a lot of people do is actually go and highlight the specific queries um, on each explorer. So you can drill down to the query level. Again, this is in the history explorer. Um, and you might uh, find that you know there's a handful of queries that are being run over and over that are particularly problematic. Um, and what you then typically are going to want to validate, or, or you might in this kind of flow, is can you consistently replicate those long run, long run times? And if the answer is yes, um, it means that there's probably something about the query or your warehouse that is in an, it that is in and of itself slow. And so the things you may want to look at at that point is you dig into the SQL and you're able to replicate those runtimes is should we persist things a little more? If it's a derived table that's in there, should we persist that? Are we doing unnecessary joins based on the kind of common query patterns that are really slow for people? Um, should we add aggregate awareness, aggregate rollups to these explorers so that people aren't having to scan as much data or process as much data with every question? Um, and this is one where you're going to want to go back to the history explorer. And um, for those who aren't familiar, um, aggregate awareness is a way of kind of creating a, a persistent table that is managed by Looker that is aggregated to a specific level. And when you ask a query that can be answered by that rollup, it, it does so. And so it gets answers much more quickly than if it has to go to the full larger table. And so effectively here, you'd want to go back to the history explorer in the in the system activity model and say, OK, well, what are the um, fields that are, you know, is there a grain of query that is used a lot as a pattern in this explorer? If everyone is always grouping by, you know, um, product and order date, you probably want to produce a role at those levels. So you can use the history explorer to, to understand that. Other solutions here, if things are slow, is you're going to want to change the database structure, maybe views to tables or um, add partitioning or um, cluster keys or indexes, depending on what warehouse you're on. Um, and then maybe you find that people, you know, scans of your database are happening needlessly or um, people are pulling too much data by default, and that's what's causing the long run times. And so you might want to apply default filters. And then there's another path, which is, hey, no, actually, the runtimes for these queries aren't consistent. We aren't able to consistently replicate long runtimes. Um, this may be due to, means there's something kind of transient at a point in time that is causing uh, really slow queries. And uh, you may then want to see like, hey, is there a time of day where tons of schedules kick off that might slow down queries because so much volume is being put through Looker in the warehouse? Or maybe is there a way that we could improve caching? So some, you know, our caching policy may not be, uh, optimize, we should go see what percentage of queries are hitting our cache and understand whether we can use data groups or things like that to, to improve things there. Um, and then kind of, so continuing that, there's another one, which is, hey, we think we have too many schedules kicking off all at the same time. Um, and so you can use the Schedule Plan Explorer to find the times of day that most schedules are kicking off simultaneously. Um, and then there's a couple different solutions here. And these are things we're starting to talk about with, with our customers. And um, it's kind of remarkable how much of a difference just these small things can have on the health and the experience that people have in Looker. Um, so one is to jitter the schedules around the existing refresh time. So if you have, um, let's say, 100 schedules kicking off at 9 a.m. on a Monday, 
um, and moving them to 3 a.m. on a Monday isn't uh, possible. Like moving them to a time when people are using Looker less doesn't make sense. One thing that uh, can be very effective is spreading those schedules out between 9 and 9.30, let's say. And so very rarely do people need to report exactly at 9. They just want to receive it on Monday morning. And so you can spread those out, which will both reduce the simultaneous kind of concurrent load on Looker, but also reduce the concurrent load on your warehouse. So if you're on Snowflake, for example, it means your in, your virtual warehouses will scale less and you'll be able to save money as well. Uh, another solution you may find is that, hey, there are a bunch of schedules here that really could just happen overnight. And so you spread them out between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. Um, so that the warehouse load is kept minimal, so that the looker load is kept minimal, and so that it's never happening at a time um, where people are otherwise using looker and may expect stuff a, a bit more quickly. Um, and then the final one is often, as we find with people, if you go through your schedule plan and you see what's kicking off when, um, most people just don't have visibility on that. Um, and then you'll typically find that there's just a ton of schedules that are either running too frequently or simply don't need to be run at all. Um, and it kind of gives you the information you need to go in and clean that up. Um, and then finally, another, I think, one side of, of um, kind of a place where Looker, where people kind of take a look in the wrong way is, is the query performance. I think the other is just code and content bloat. Um, and so there's a couple of different things you can do here to, to do that. Uh, the first is go and find the explorers and fields that are used the least. Uh, you can do this in the history explorer. Um, the reason I have an asterisk there is the base of the history explorer is uh, queries, and then it kind of gets the explorers and models joined on after that. And so if you have explorers in the last 90 days haven't been queried at all, they actually won't show up in the report there if you kind of, you know, group by model explorer and then query count. Um, you won't see them there with the zero next to them because of how those joins work. Um, and so that's just something to be aware of if you go down the path of, of doing this. You may want to just pull out all your explorers via the API first and then um, use this information to cross-reference it or, or things like that. And so you've explained, if you find that explorers and fields aren't being used a lot, and, and we found cases where in a given explorer, like 80% of fields aren't being used at all. And you can really pare that experience down to, to improve it for people. Um, there's a whole range of things you can do to lead explorers, delete joins, delete fields, or maybe the simplest without kind of undoing any code. It's just apply a field set. So understand what is being used and then limit those explorers to those fields to provide a better UX to people in your Looker instance. Um, a second uh, analysis you can do is to identify which users and groups are using which explorers. So we speak to a lot of customers who have like 30, 40, 50, up to a couple hundred explorers. And for all users to see all those explorers can sometimes be an overwhelming experience from a, a user point of view. And so what you may want to do is identify, use the history explorer to identify which users or groups are using which explorers. Um, and then you can, from there, use uh, roles and model sets to grant specific explorers to different user groups. Um, and it's not to say that you don't, you might not want to grant them access to something if they ask, but often, particularly when you're easing people into Looker, you really want them to have access to the things they need the most so they can get familiar and comfortable with the tool and then give them more access to things. Um, and this type of analysis can be really helpful to say like, hey, these users are only using these explorers. Let's only show them those five um, so that they don't have like analysis paralysis when they log into Looker and, and see what's going on. There. Um, and then finally, you can use the content usage explorer to find content that hasn't been used. Um, that should say is not being used, not is now being used uh, in a given period of time. Um, and obviously, you want to go delete that that content. Um, there's a handful of other things you can do here. Find dashboards that have too many tiles. That's going to be a thing that's going to slow down your Looker instance. Um, find long PDTL times. Find users who aren't using Looker. Uh, find queries with problematic table calcs. You can go to all of these explorers and, and find the information you need uh, there. Um, I'm going to jump to the Q&A in just a second. Um, I referenced this last week. Um, Specials is actually about to kick off a beta that uh, is going to tackle a lot of these problems for people. Um, so if you, uh, we're going to be building out um, something new within the platform that isn't kind of part of the core testing solution, but is new diagnostic and workflow um, products that help you maintain a clean looker instance from a query performance point of view, from a you know look ML cleanliness point of view, from a content cleanliness point of view. And so if things like speeding up your looker queries, removing unnecessary look ML, deleting unused content, 
Um, anything that I've talked about today that is built on these system activity explorers is something that you're thinking about that um, you're, you would like to do a better job of as a company and you'd like some help with. Um, we're going to be opening the beta up to, to probably up to 10 companies to help them uh, and to have them test the stuff that we're building for free for the next couple of months while we're building it out. Um, and so we'd love to, to work with you if this sounds like something that you would benefit from and where you're really acutely feeling these problems. Um, and so if that is you, please email me. Um, you can find me on Slack as well. So really anywhere, but Dylan at spectacles.dev. Um, just drop me a note. We'll set up a call to talk through kind of the healthier looker and since and how things are going and and hopefully get you involved if um, if that's something that makes sense. Perfect. Um, so we're at the Q and A section. Um, so if you have questions, please drop them in Slack, um, and uh, I will pull those up in a second. And actually, what I'm going to do first is, if you missed at the beginning and, and for whatever reason didn't get the sign up uh, link for Slack, I'm just going to drop that in the chat again, um, so you can join us there. Um, perfect. So I can see there is. Uh, actually, not a question, a comment, but uh, Kat just shared a uh, note on the elite system activity that it updates slightly lower due to the detail process in the background. So, uh, for example, if you want to see if someone logs in, uh, standard activity will have it in five to 10 minutes, but elite may take longer. Yeah. So, the, the way the elite system activity works, and, and Kat, that's a great point. Um, the way the system activity works is it's offloading it to, I think it's always BigQuery. There may be instances where it's where it's something else. Um, but because there's an ETL where it needs to move it from the kind of looker database to those databases, uh, it, it's going to be slightly slower. So if you're doing analyses in there that, you know, do require much lower latency, um, it may not be a good fit. Um, and But often, if you're doing stuff that needs that lower latency, 90 days of activity is going to be enough for you. And so doing it in the, the standard system activity is going to, going to be um, going to be great. And actually, there's a, a whole thread that uh, I can see Kat and Tom are, are chatting through in Slack. So if you're not in there, go over and, and have a look. Um, if others have a question, please fire them across. There aren't any in there right now, but we'll wait a sec and then uh, and then go from there. Uh, a question that says, does system activity allow us to see info about queries in queue, average time in queue, and things like that? Um, I believe the answer to that is yes. You should basically be able to break down um, every part of the query time. I'm actually just jumping into Looker on our instance to, to confirm whether that's the case. Um, but I believe in either the history explore or the query performance metrics explore, you should be able to see um, exactly what is happening there. It looks like it's not in the query performance metrics. So I think that has to do with just the query itself. Um, but I am just looking through here. It's actually possible it doesn't. I don't immediately see it. I thought that you would be able to see every section, but it may be that it relates just to the um, just to the runtimes themselves, kind of once they've been queued. Um, the only extended answer that I have is is just jump into the explorers and have a look. But I think the two that it would be in, if it is in there, would be the history explorer or the query performance metrics explorer. Those are the two that that um, are going to have that type of information. Um, but sorry to not be able to give you a, a exact answer. Um, are there any pre-built dashboards related to PDT builds and build errors? Um, that is another question that I don't actually know the exact answer to, but I'm going to jump in here. Um, I think it would be in the database performance dashboard, but I, I don't think there's anything pre-built around PDT errors itself. I think it's more around uh, PDT runtimes and, and things like that. Yeah, there's uh, you can see how many times they failed. So in the database performance uh, dashboard, right at the bottom of it, there's a PDT build activity uh, tile that says how many times the trigger has failed and things like that. Um, but you'll be able to build a more kind of complex and informative version of that uh, just by going directly to the PDT builds explore. Um, that one has lots of good information about those PDT builds. And I think you'll very quickly uh, be able to find errors there or on the PDT. Um, uh, there's also a PDT event, uh, event log one, which will also have kind of failures in there 
as well. But yeah, there's a status on the PDT builds one. And so you can group by kind of what was the status of the PDT build? Was it failed? Was there an error? Things like that. Um, what is an ideal percentage of cash being utilized? Um, so that's kind of, it's, it's a really good question. And ultimately we get asked this quite a bit, actually. The answer is ultimately based on what your workflow looks like. In an ideal point of view, well, uh, yeah, in an ideal setup, you know, 99% of queries hit a cache that, you know, every, the first time a query gets run, um, it hits the database and then until the uh, data group expires, all subsequent versions of that query hit uh, the, the looker cache instead of the warehouse. Um, ultimately, if you need a bunch of real-time stuff in looker, you're, the ideal percentage for you is the like only possible percentage, which is zero. Um, for other people, we see anything from like 20 to 50 to 60% being kind of good, but it ultimately, there's only so much you can do for this, given what your the requirements of your setup are um, and how different queries are that hit your, your instance and things like that. If people are running lots of the same query, uh, and you can see the people who are running lots of the same query not too far apart from each other, and none of them are hitting cache, you know, your cache percentage is in the 10%, 5%, then there is definitely more that you can do. Um, but if you're above 50%, depending on your, your workflow, you may find that there's not a, a time you can do. Um, the percentage chain in cache is going to depend on how frequent, well, how real time you want to provide people data in Looker, um, how frequently your data updates in your database, and what your workflows, uh, sorry, and what query patterns are like. You know, if no one is ever running the same query, you're never going to hit the cache. If you've got a lot of recurring patterns, um, you are going to see people hitting the cache there. Um, so it depends a little on on the org. Everyone can, I think, improve their combination of like um, configuring data groups and, and caching policies a little better um, can can move the needle there. But uh, yeah, there's no kind of like one single number that's that's good. You want it as high as possible in an ISO world. It's going to return faster queries. It's going to put less load on your warehouse. Um, I can see a couple of people are are writing some additional questions, so I will wait for those, and then uh, we will uh, go from there. Um, one of the biggest issues is folder access with manager access edit combined, because for user being able to save content to shoulder means they can delete, rename, and move folders, uh, et cetera. This requires monitoring. Um, yeah, uh, for sure. You th There are things like that that... Um, I think no permission model in any tool is perfect. And there are definitely gonna, gonna be cases where um, you would need to like monitor who's deleting what and when. Um, and yeah, Tom, you kind of list some stuff here, who created, renamed, moved or deleted folders, um, who deleted content, who edited dashboards. Some of that unfortunately is not gonna be available in here. I think you don't get an event log as far as I'm aware of what has happened to content um, over time. I think one thing you could do is version, and you'd have to do this externally, is kind of version the state of the data in here and do kind of like a, get like a type two slowly changing dimension table in your warehouse that shows how things have been changed over time and what's been deleted over time and, and things like that. The dashboard, um, the dashboard uh, explorer will allow you, I believe, to look at, um, stuff that has in the been moved to the trash. Um, and so you could see, you know, who did that and on what date and things like that. Um, so you'll definitely be able to get a, a fair chunk of that, not necessarily all of what's went mentioned there. Um, and then Tom, uh, different Tom says, can you remodel the system activity explorers at all? I often find that I have to manually perform merge queries against the same explorers and it'd be convenient to have an explorer or two that already perform those merges. Um, not as far as I'm aware in the standard system activity. Um, if you have elite performance, you can build your own explorers on that data and uh, build your own code on top of that data and, and join those in whatever way you want. Um, so not in the standard model. Um, the other thing you can do is you can try to export this model yourself. I mean, there's, you know, Looker has the ability to, um, dump data to kind of Google Cloud Storage or things like that. So if you're on BigQuery, it'd be 
easy enough to set up a scheduled report and then build a big query table on top of some of this data. And you're not going to get it view by view, though. You're kind of going to get this like large denormalized table, um, but that may be, may be sufficient for most use cases. Um, I'm going to call it there. I, I can see a couple of people are, are asking some more questions in the Slack. I'll probably try to come to those um, uh, in written form shortly, but but where we're coming up on the 45 minute mark here. Um, so if this was interesting to you and you have left this thinking like, hey, there's all of these areas that I'm going to use this in the next coming weeks to clean up our instance, um, we would love to work with you. If uh, Really, if that's the takeaway that you've had from this, um, you sounds like you may well be a really good fit for the type of stuff that we're building. And, and hopefully we can save you some of the effort of doing it. And you can help us build a really kind of first class uh, workflow and, and diagnostic tool for Looker that is built on top of all this information. Um, and so get in touch, drop me a message. I'm in Slack. Um, if you're in there, just, just look me up, Dylan Atlas Baker. Um, or drop me an email. It's Dylan at spectacles.dev. Um, and we'll be kicking that off in the next couple of weeks. So um, yeah, we'd love to have a chat with you just to even see if it's a good fit or even if you just want to rant about the issues that you're having and, and vent a little, happy to book in a 30 minute call so, so that you can do that as well. Um, perfect. So on that note, um, we're going to call it a day here. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us today. The engagement uh, today has been awesome. We really appreciate all the questions. Um, we'll be back in two weeks with a deep dive into how we use uh, Looker and our data stack at Spectacles. Um, so head to spectacles.dev slash webinars to sign up for that. Um, and yeah, just once again, big thank you for, for your attendance today. We'll send out a recording uh, after this and uh, hope to see you join us at one of our upcoming webinars. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>